What's up, everybody? Tonight, I can't preface this enough. This is an important night. You might not know it now, but if you've been paying attention to what's been happening, been watching the news headlines, reading you know certain scrolling things on the web, whether it's real or not, I would have to believe most of you are a little bit spooked right now. And that's putting it lightly, right? Many of you probably just got your statements, okay? Your third quarter 401k statements. Many of you go on and check your 401k statements and your brokerage statements all the time. How are they doing? In the chat, tell me how is your 401k doing this year? Because hey, the market's way up. The market's actually up quite a bit. Matter of fact, I, I did some research here before we got started. The, uh, the S&P 500 as of 2023 is up 12.4%. How about any of you? Uh, any of you getting 12.4% on the S&P 500? You see, here's a funny thing. A funny thing, so, okay, up 15%, that's awesome. But a lot of you, when you see the news and you look at the reports and it says up 12.4%, a lot of you aren't really realizing 12.4% because after fees and all that stuff, it's not 12.4%. I've been hearing this left, right, and center. And, and our money mentors have also been hearing this, that most folks, when they're looking at their most current statements, they're down. The market has been hemorrhaging right now, okay? Yes, I know it's up, but can we just hit the elephant in the room right now? Can anyone right now tell me why the S&P 500 is up? Can anyone? Because that that's this is an important thing. Now, all of you are here for a different reason. While you're putting it in there, why the S&P 500 or any of the indexes, the NASDAQ, the Dow, why are they all up? That's all I want you to put in there. AI, James got it right. But we're gonna, we're gonna hit that in a second. But we're also gonna cover how you all can be your own bank. Okay. We're also going to cover how your qualified funds can be working for you instead of working for Wall Street or Wall Street working against you is, is what I'm seeing by some people. Some people are saying it's, it's manipulated <clears throat> pre-crash. Wow, Todd. Absolutely correct. Pre-crash. You're darn right. Cheating. Well, absolutely. Because uh, let's see, two, seven, yep, eight, seven stocks. So some of you have been watching the videos. Maybe some of you have seen some of the other stuff talking about that. Certain companies holding up. I'm talk about them. Tech, AI, seven stocks, higher returns require active trading. Yeah, Jason, absolutely correct. So I'm just talking about the people that have 401ks that are just putting money in their 401k, closing their eyes, going to work, getting their statement, looking at it and saying, whoa, honey, uh, what happened here? And I think somebody said still down 30,000 from my all-time high. Not terrible, minus staying at like 9%. Okay, great. Uh, 401ks all in T-bonds. Very smart, Rick. But you see... Rick's in treasury bonds. And in, in him just saying that, now, if you asked Rick how he's doing, he's going to say he's down, which is exactly what Rick wants. If he's in T-bonds, if he's in treasury bonds or T-bills, well, maybe not so much T-bills short-term, but the longer-term treasuries, they're all down. Why? Because interest rates are up. So when interest rates are up, treasury bonds are down, for, for providing an awesome, awesome opportunity for every one of you, all 152 of you. You all have the, just probably one of the greatest opportunities right now or right ahead of you, if and only if you're ready. I said this on the Insta story that I did this morning. I know when you, when you look out and you get sucked into the news, you know, the war with Hamas in, in Israel, that you got Ukraine, Russia, you got Biden flying around doing who knows what, playing proxy wars. You, you, got, you got all this stuff. You got China and, you know, China and Russia meeting. You got oil going crazy. There's all sorts of stuff, right? And you can just get into this negative funk and be like, oh my God. But just always remember the serenity prayer. Just, just and if you don't know what it is, Google it, okay? We can only control the things that are in our power to control. So don't worry about the stuff you can't control. Let's just focus today, tonight, on the things you can control. And what I wanna do is I wanna give all of you three, three rock solid things that you all can do if you choose to do. But if I literally just said, there's three things I can give you that will make all of you money. Pretty much no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Make all of you money. You'd all be excited, right? But you see, then when I tell you what they are, you're going to come up with some excuses as to why you wouldn't do that. Oh, why that won't work for me. Oh, that, that won't work for me. Oh, this, this, there's no way that could happen. I'm going to give you three things that I can almost tell you will work for 100% of you. I'm not gonna say guaranteed to work for all of you because I don't know all of you, but I'm gonna say for the most part, we'll work for every single one of you and we'll make every single one of you a bunch of money. But here's the best part, with very little risk. That's, that should just be music to your ears because 
you know, those of you that, that had mentioned, you know, that your 401ks are good, you know, doing well, or some of you had said that you're actively trading, that's great. If you know what you're doing, it's great to actively trade. It's, if you know what you're doing, it's great to trade options. Although right now with the, the market's doing what they're doing, the option traders I know are not bearing, they're not doing so well. The markets can't pick a direction. One day it's up, next day it's down. Next day it's, I mean, today the market was up. Why? Well, earnings, a couple earnings come out. It, it's, it's so fickle that it just makes you almost not even want to be in it, right? My question to most people is why the hell are you still in the market? Like, what are you waiting for? Are you waiting to lose money? Because that's exactly what's going to happen. Matter of fact, that's exactly what's happening to many folks right now. They're, they're waiting. They were waiting because, oh, it's going to go higher. Oh, my advisor said we just got to play the long game. It's going to be good. It's going to be fine. It's just a paper loss. And then all of a sudden, when that paper loss hits and you're down 12, 15, 20%, that paper loss becomes real. Whether it's paper or not, it becomes real. It starts making you make decisions. And those are not the right logical decisions. They are emotional-based decisions you're going to make. And the best way to not have to make emotional-based decisions is to get ahead of it. But the one thing I want to I wanna be honest with all of you, you know, we've got about a little more than 45 minutes and we always go a little over. So I'll give you all the value I can. We've got, we got a little bit more than 45 minutes and that's just not enough time. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I'll give you three things, but I got like 50 things I want to give you. And I got to paint the picture of why these three things are really going to make sense. So I think we can all agree right now, actually, let, let's do it. Do you think you think 45 minutes is enough time for me to give you everything all of you need to get you to where you need to be to be financially secure and safe with your money? It should be good. Absolutely not. <laughs> it's not. Okay. Steven's like, shoot, man, I think I think we need 15 minutes. You know, and 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 I tell you, a lot of people watching Instagram or TikTok, they're like, in one minute, how, how come I don't know exactly how to do the infinite banking concept? I watched a one minute video and, and it just doesn't make any sense. Exactly my point. So there's just not going to be enough time for me to get all of this information to you. But, and also I, I always like being completely transparent. I'm going to pour everything I know out and Steven's going to do the same thing. We're going to go back and forth in just a second on all the things you need to know and the things you need to be doing, at least three of the things you need to be doing, every one of you. But I'm going to tell you, here's what I expect. I'm going to give you everything, but I have an ask. We have a three-day training coming up next weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So we're here giving you all this information, although not everything we're going to give you, but I'm here to ask you to attend next weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. It's 297 bucks. That's the cost for the ticket. This is one of the longest standing trainings we've done and also by far the best. Many of you have gone through it. And I know some of you are like, oh, I already went through the last one. Great. This one's completely different, but you already knew that because if you've been through one, you know that everyone is completely different because we redo all of the content with the exception of maybe the entities are the same, we redo it all to fit the times. And I will tell you, three months ago, things were a lot different than they are today. We weren't staring down the barrel of World War III. We weren't on the cusp of a lot of different things going on in the government and also with the Fed. The Fed didn't just come out three months ago and say, hey, inflation's still a little high. We think we're going to probably have to inflict some more pain. It's kind of like, we're just going to stick the knife in a little more and twist it. That wasn't three months ago. So this training is all about right here and right now and what you need to be doing right here and right now. So that's my ask. We're going to be talking about it toward the end. I want to get into the content now, but I just wanted to let you all know, I'm going to be asking all of you for something in return for me pouring out what I know. Fair enough. It's always good to know what you're here for, right? You're here to learn, but I also have something to offer you and it has a cost. Okay, great. So let's get into this. So here's, here's a couple of the things I want to preface, okay? I want to talk about some of the reasons why whoever is telling you that we're going to have a soft landing, that we're not going to be in a recession, that things are going to be okay, that you should stay in for the long haul. I'm going to give you a couple key reasons, factual reasons. I'm not going to give you my opinions. My opinion is my opinion, but I'm going to give you factual reasons why things aren't going to be okay. Okay. I, I, and I'm not trying to scare you. I'm not trying to scare you to get you to buy a three day or a, yeah, a three day money school essentials ticket. I'm, I'm being real with you right now. These are real things that are happening. So let's get into it. First off, I mentioned earlier, why is the market still up? Why is the S&P still up? And many of you already got it right. Seven stocks, seven stocks, that's it. Seven stocks. If you do the math, it's a little over 1%, I think. Stephen, can you divide uh, seven into 500 and let me know what that is? Seven into 500. 0.014. 0.014, so 1.4% of the S&P 500 
is holding the entire S&P 500 up. And he, here's the numbers. Let me just give them to you here real quick. Because if we look at the S&P 500, it's up 12.4%, or it was last week, all held up by the Magnificent Seven, okay? Which basically are, you know, are, are the majority of the returns, 92% of the return of the S&P 500 is the seven stocks. So if we were to remove those seven stocks, what would the S&P 500 have returned? I did it this way. Micro caps would be down 1.85. Small caps would be down. Mid caps would be down 7.1. And large company stocks would be down 18.66. So I broke it down by, by cap size, company cap. But all you need to know is, do you really feel comfortable knowing that the entire stock market, for the most part, because the NASDAQ, the same companies in the NASDAQ are, are a lot of the same companies in the S&P 500 propping it up, tech, AI, and speculation. Those all, if you remove them, the market's negative. So you really want to bet your retirement. You want to bet your wealth on seven companies. Some of you are like, hell yeah, I like those seven companies. Who are they? Well, let's talk about them. Meta, which is Facebook, NVIDIA, Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet, Amazon, Tesla. How's Tesla doing? Didn't they just have a little bit of an upset? Yeah, they did. They did. Uh, how about NVIDIA? How's NVIDIA doing? Did, Steven, didn't something just happen with NVIDIA? Pretty sure. Pretty sure it did. Uh, I know uh, Google was just out today. They beat, but they're they're reducing their outlooks. It was just in the news today, as a matter of fact. So when you look at this, you have to really, really be very cautious about this because there really are three reasons the market's being held up. The magnificent seven, like I just said. Second, unemployment numbers. The unemployment numbers are historically low, 50-year low. Why? Well, the country was shut down for a couple of years for the pandemic. Everybody went back to work. All the payments stopped for the people that didn't want to go to work. So now everybody's working. and Primarily because a lot of the companies that are doing really well, when you look, they're companies that are not leading indicators. They're lagging indicators. So when the markets are showing weakness, those companies are not showing weakness yet. Things like real estate, that's already starting to show cracks. Okay, Technology, usually not a, a leading indicator. It's usually a lagging indicator. But transportation certainly is a leading indicator. So you can look at transportation. You can look at railroads. You can look at all those stocks. They're, they're definitely showing weakness. But you don't hear about it in the news. If you just follow the news, all you hear about are the good things. Very rarely do you ever see the bad stuff, which is why we go to another source. Another reason why the market's going to go down and why right now the market is still up, okay? Notice how I said that? This is a reason why the market's going to go down, but it's also a reason why the market's up. Credit cards. See, when a bunch of people are employed, when unemployment numbers are his historically low, that means everybody's got an income. And when you get an income, what do you get? a letter in the mail that says you can get a credit card, not just one, but two and three and five. And sometimes you get like multiple credit cards sent to you in the same day with all these offers. So people during the pandemic had record savings and they were paying debt down. After the pandemic, we call that revenge summer, a couple of summers ago, everybody went out and started spending money. It is anticipated and predicted right now that people's savings for the most part, the majorities, we're talking statistics, that the majority of savings will be wiped out by the end of this year because of inflation, high cost and because things are just out of control and because the markets probably won't hold up. So when I give you all of these different things, the credit card debt in this country is at a record high. Why? Because people still want to live the lifestyle that they got used to living. And how are they doing that? Well, their income isn't enough right now because inflation has outpaced income, I, I think, by about 30%. I did a, a YouTube video on this. And sorry, I don't have the exact numbers. But, but incomes are not keeping pace with inflation. So therefore, what, what's, what has to give? Well, first you deplete, you deplete your savings. After your savings are gone, then you start spending on the credit card, but then you just stop paying the credit card off because you got an income and you're like, oh, well, we can pay the credit card. But what happens in that scenario when your income drops, when you get laid off, when your company shuts down, when your company lays people off? Like Geico just walked 2,000 people out a couple of days ago. And I think the next day they walked more out. Tess knows how many people it was. What happens if you're one of those 2,000 people that just got walked out of Geico? How are you feeling about your credit card debt right now? How are you feeling about those brand new student loan payments that you got to make? Not good. So why am I telling you all this? I'm telling you this because there's no way this thing's soft landing. No way. And here's the number one reason why. I'm going to give it to you right now. If, if you were to go out, and I, and I have this in my notes too, if you were to go out and you were to look at the different people that could tell you whether the markets are going to do well, You'd go to the Fed. The Fed says there's a 0% chance of a recession. That's the Fed. Why? Well, because they have the printing press. Well, they have the control of the printing press, I should say. 
How about the yield curve, the inverted yield curve? Well, that indicator is about 61% correct. So that's saying we have a 61% chance of a recession because of the yield curve. Okay, then we go in, these are just, these are just 2024 projected surveys. Economists say 48% chance of a recession. Now, some of you would be like, oh, I'd go with the economists. Yeah, but who's paying the economist? Is it the bank? Is it the Wall Street firm? You got to understand a lot of economists are weighted because of who they work for and who their paycheck comes from. Are they going to say, oh, there's a 99% chance of a recession when they work for Wells Fargo or, or Goldman Sachs? You think that's going to be good for their job? No, I doubt it. But they're still saying 48% chance. If we were to poll consumers, 69%. Goldman Sachs, 15%. Bank of America, 40% chance. But here's the one that really should wake you up a little bit. CEOs. Who's the main front line in this country to know what's really going on? Who's the first to see a slowdown or, or an economic boom? Isn't it the owners of companies? Absolutely. They're, they're, you want to talk about a leading indicator? They're a freaking front line. They know what's going on. Now, let me read you something, and then we're going to get into some of the things that can really, really help all of you. Now, why am I giving you all this data? I'm giving you this data because this is how you make a decision on factual data. Am I giving you a little bit of my opinion? Yes, but I'm giving you factual data. And here's another one. So this one's just talking about overnight rates, okay? And I'm going to do this really quick, but it said, with the Fed holding overnight rates near zero for nearly 15 years. You guys know that, that the Fed held rates low for almost 15 years? I didn't know that. It's right here. Uh, with the expectation of a short pause from 27 or 2017 to 19, banks were guaranteed profits on deposits. At the same time, homeowners feasted on low rates. Now that the rates are much higher, banks must pay higher rates to hang on to deposits, but they're holding a bunch of low yield investments. Now, when times were really good, banks, what they did is they took all that excess money that they had and they put that money in, in what? Treasury bonds, right? And what happened to treasury bonds? If you were paying attention to Silicon Valley Bank or Republic or, or Signature Bank, what happened when they had runs on the bank? The bank had to go to their tier one assets and sell it off because they only keep 10% in tier one, okay? And what is tier one? Bully, bank-owned life insurance, and treasury bonds. Treasury bonds are more liquid than the bully for the bank because the banks usually got all the, the life insurance money out there working. So when they got to sell the treasury bonds, but they got to sell the treasury bonds in a time when the Fed has been raising rates, it brings the price of the bonds down, like I mentioned earlier, right? So price of bonds are down and the banks had to sell. Game over. That's what I'm trying to say. They're, they're holding low-yielding investments that have accumulated since 2008 because that's what they kept buying because that's the only thing that banks were allowed to buy. And these investments don't pay out enough cash to cover the debt in interest, the, the deposit interest, which is the debt to the bank. To top it off, the mortgage business, which now makes which now makes loans at 7 to 8%, actually right now, 30 years are over 8%, at least they were a day ago, uh, is in a deep freeze. Mortgage business, the refinance business is dead. If any of you are in that business, I'd love to hear from you because I'm sure that it's a tough time. <clears throat> so why do I talk about all this? Well, you know what else happened in those 15 years? Well, here's what happened. You see, CEOs of companies had access to lots of money, cheap money, 2% money. So they went out and they took lines of credit out. They took loans, even when they didn't need the money for capital expenditures. They took loans. Why? Well, because why not take it at 2% when you're a business, right? CEOs just said, hey, you're giving pretty much free money out. We'll take it. Remember the, uh, the EDIL loans when the government gave them to everybody at 3%? I mean, come on. If you own a business, did you ever not take money? Did you not take EDIL money at, at like 3%? You're all like, well, you know, I don't really need it, but at 3%, for however long it was, 20, 30 years, yeah, take it, why not? But you see, businesses didn't just take EDIL number or EDIL money, they also took money from banks. And most commercial loans that are given from banks or lines of credit have a rate lock. Any of you in business know this. If you took out a commercial mortgage on a rental, you had a rate lock, five years, seven years, maybe 10 years. So what's gonna happen? So remember, they kept rates down for 15 years. Businesses have been just taking this cheap money for those 15 years. So what do you think is happening right now? Those loans are maturing. Any of you in real estate, if you have rentals from a couple of years ago, I started back in 2006, but my big rentals you know, came from 2009 straight through. So you bet your butt, I've had many of those mortgages come up to maturity. I have a bunch right now. I'm just buying them out, but that's we're going to get that in a second. So as these loans mature, they're going to literally go from 3 to 4% to what? 8 8% or more. So think about that. You're a business. You borrowed all this money. 
You don't have that money. You spent that money. That money went somewhere. You invested it into the business or you did something with it. And now all of a sudden that debt is going to double in cost. In a time when your business, all the businesses reporting, if you've been paying attention to the earnings seasons, almost every business has reported lower future forecasts. Your cost double, your future outlook is looking somber. Do you see the problem? Well, let me, let me put it in numbers for you because here is the numbers for corporate debt maturing. Oh, and by the way, uh, WeWork just defaulted on $95 million. And that company over in China, yeah, that one's a doozy. But uh, here we go. 2023, $525 billion in corporate debt is maturing. And when it matures, it's going from a low interest rate to at least 8%, just so you know. 2024, $790 billion. 2025, $1.1 trillion. 2026, one point two. Trillion. So why is it that uh, CEOs are the best indicator of that? Why is it that CEOs say that there's an 84% chance of a recession? That's why. They got a front row seat to disaster. So here's the good news. It's a great opportunity because all these businesses that took money that weren't really smart, that didn't get ready for this, that didn't prepare for this, or that just got caught up in the tangle of 15 years of low interest rates when the Fed in one year jumped rates about 5%, they're, they're caught up in it. So what's that mean? Well, it means that in the future, you can buy any of those stocks, any of those companies on sale. It's freaking like walking into rollback or into Walmart when everything's rolled back, right? It's kind of cool. You walk in and all that's rolled back. Oh, it's 50% off. Wow, look at that 70%. Honey, I know we don't need that, but it's 80% off. Come on. Usually it's, you know, my wife saying, honey, we got to buy that. Look at it, it's on sale. I'm like, honey, we have six of them. It doesn't matter. It's 80% off. We should buy more, right? Anyone relate? So all I'm trying to explain is the opportunity is right in front of you, but it is not right in front of you if you do nothing right now. If you've been watching the markets just this week alone, after Jerome Powell told you what, what, his out, what the Fed's outlook was, the markets have been plummeting, except for today. Today was a weird one because a couple of companies, you know, GM came out and said, oh, we beat. GM is a lagging indicator. Like you shouldn't even look at that. You shouldn't even, the market shouldn't have even reacted to GMs like saying that they beat their earnings expectations. You shouldn't have even looked at that because car companies are the worst indicators. People bought cars, the, the recording cars that were bought. It, we got to look at the future and the future says that they're looking at lower expectations. So here's it. Here's number one. And, and before we get into number one, I also want to remind all of you the cost of all the goods and services that you buy from food and everything else. It's all gone way up. So things are a lot more expensive for us too, not just for businesses that are going to go off the, the debt cliff. They're more expensive for us. So number one, we've got to go into a preservation of principal mode. And I'm being dead serious with you. You are all going to have to, in some cases, I would say man up or, or get tough or just, just literally realize that you are the best steward of your money. You are the, the cavalry is not coming for you. Nobody cares more about your money than you. I, I don't know how else to say that. What is everyone investing in? I'm just curious. Put in the chat box, like, what are you guys, what are you guys doing right now? I mean, one thing personally, you know, we're doing a lot of, you know, things that I can control. And at the end of the day, I put that in the chat box a second ago. I mean, what we do with BYOB and this money school essentials is all about controlling your wealth, controlling your money. And then no matter what the markets are doing, when we have control, we're able to be smart and selective over how we position our wealth and, and where we put it. Take check, a check. The times that we're in. And so right now, a lot of investment short-term things where I can get the money back when I need it, more liquidity, things of that nature. You know, I'm personally right now heavily investing in myself. So my businesses, some education partnerships, things like that, that are going to be able to take advantage of the market. So the only way you're going to succeed in preserving and protecting is by you taking control of your money. That is it. If you call your advisor tomorrow and you say, hey, I was on this webinar and the guy, Chris, this Chris guy wearing a trucker style hat said, you know, I need to preserve and protect my money. What does that mean? So they might articulate it differently. And, and I'll give you an example. Um, client I just had on the phone the other day, like th they're in their late 60s. They've got a sizable amount that they've built up. They have a trusted advisor from Edward Jones, okay? And this advisor told them that they should be taking more money and putting it into mutual funds. So at first I'm like, well, I don't want to beat this guy up too bad, but you know, send me over the statements. Let me see what let me see what he's recommending that you have your money in. Let me look at your portfolio. They sent it over to me and I I, I literally I wanted to puke. 
and I don't know how else to say it. I physically felt ill. Is anyone on here over uh, 65? And I'm not trying to like kind of rule out everybody under 65. I'm just I'm just trying to see. Is anyone okay? So Tony is anyone else over? Or or how about this? Anyone retired or looking to retire in the next three to five years? 76, 64. See, we have we have a lot of folks that are retired in our in our Stephen. Stephen's ready, <laughs> retired. <clears throat> now let me ask all of you that that put you know that chimed in. Can you afford to lose 20 or 30 percent right now? I'll bet you any money, folks. If we look at all the yeses that came in and all the no's that just came in, the answer is probably 100% no, except for Andy. He said, I can, yes. I already have. Uh, Owen's already lost uh, 20 or 30. So and so, so some, of them, Claire, some of them are already lost, okay? But they don't want to lose more. So here's one thing I know. 16 years as an advisor, same thing with Stephen. We're trained really heavily to know that as somebody gets closer and closer to retirement, the risk level goes down and down and down. And as you you get into economic times like this, where things are kind of rocky, where there's a potential for loss, the advisor, especially if they're a fiduciary, an RIA or of such, needs to really, really take that seriously in one of two things. If the client wants to stay invested in the market, what they need to do is create a secondary pool of money to support a period of time, which normally what we used to do is take the, the average recessionary period, let's call it a year and a half, okay, where things get rocky, and you put money in safe assets. And back then, we'd use treasuries, T-bills, and money market funds. Great place right now, treasuries, T-bills, and money markets. Aren't they paying a pretty good return right now? Yeah, well over 5%. And, and you know, I bet you just a few short years ago, a bunch of you, if I said, how many of you would be psyched to make four, five, or 6% on your money, you'd all be thrilled. But you see, we've gotten greedy. We've gotten really freaking greedy because it's been a, the longest bull run in history. We almost, some of us almost feel like immune to a market drop. We feel like, oh, there's no way it can go down. It hasn't gone down. It's 12, 13 years we've been going out. How long has it been? 12, might even almost be 13 years. We've been in a bull run. We almost think that it can't go down. But I assure you it can. And when it does, it if you're retired or you're a little bit older, you, I'm just going to be honest with you, you cannot afford a market fall. And it's not because you you don't have enough money. Some of you are like, oh, hell, Chris, I got enough money. I can afford it. But you really can't. Because if you're just thinking you can afford it, you're not thinking about your kids and your family. Because here's the deal. When the market goes down, when the market goes down 20 or 30%, there's this thing called the drawdown effect, which means to make back the 20, 30, 40% that you lose, you got to make a lot more. 40%, you got to make like 67% back. Okay. 30%, you got to make like 43% back. If you lost 30, you got to make 13% more than, than 30 just to get the money back. Well, the runway is just not long enough. It'd be like taking a 747 and taking it out to one of those dirt runways where they launch the Cessnas and, and good luck. You know where your plane's going to land? It's not going to land. It's not going to get off the ground. It's going to be in the woods. I'm just being real with you folks. So preservation of principle is the only choice for so many of you. And for the rest of you that are like, oh, I'm young enough, I would just ask, why would you ever want to ride what this roller coaster is going to be coming up? Why wouldn't you just want to take the bridge over this mess? Instead, you want to go down the cliff. You want to ride the markets all the way down and then through the rocky bottom and the river that's gushing and, and flowing and alligators and crocodiles and snakes. Who, I'm talking about snakes. No one likes snakes. And then you got to climb back up the other side. It's just easier to take the freaking bridge, folks. So like, I'm not making a financial recommendation but I'm sincerely telling you, call your advisor. Don't ask them. Tell them, I need to preserve what I have. I want to sell all the positions that have gains. And, and then if it's non-qualified money, yes, there's some tax considerations. So get with your CPA and say, hey, what, what should we sell? What should we not? Do some tax harvesting. Or maybe just say, screw it. I'm okay paying the taxes because these are the lowest tax rates I'm ever going to get. Because in the future, I can guarantee you the government's going to raise your taxes. So taking the gains off the table is exactly what you need to be doing right now. Because if you, if you just keep pushing it and just keep pushing it, we're going to have this conversation on the next one of these. And it's not going to be, it's not going to be a pretty one. For some of you, it's already not. You're going to be sitting there. You're going to be saying, oh my God, I should have listened. And you know what the worst possible thing you could ever say to me? I should have listened to you. I can't believe I didn't listen to you. I can't believe we didn't take, you know, your, your, your suggestions that you were saying on that live. Oh man, that would have been. That, that's the worst possible thing. Because you know what that is to me? That means I failed you. That means we failed you. That me and Stephen failed you. 
Because the way we look at all of you, you're like our campfire, right? We don't want any of you to go through financial suffering. I have no product to sell you. Isn't that the best part? Like, I'm not trying to manage your money, folks. You can't call me and say, hey, Chris or Steven, hey, um, I loved what you said on there, but hey, uh, I, I don't really know. I don't like my advisor. He doesn't want to move to treasuries and T-bills and money markets. He says, that's stupid. So can you manage my money? No, I'm sorry. We don't do that. I'm teaching you to be a good steward. Why? Because you care more about your money than even we care about your money. I just care about what that means to your family if you don't take some action. So that's step number one, preserve and protect. Step number two, some of you would say to me, yeah, but Chris, if we do that, we're not going to have an income. We use our investments for income. Okay, we, we need an income out of our investments. So maybe you're invested in dividend paying stocks. Maybe you've got some bond portfolios that pay you a yield. Now, depending on the bond portfolios, you may want to keep them. But here's the one thing, number two, that we are very freaking good at solving for you. And that's income. I could literally show all of you a much better path. Remember earlier, someone said 15%. And I don't remember who it was. <clears throat> Somebody said that they made 15%. Now, let me ask all of you something. Do you think 15% is a good rate of return? If you could make 15% uh, yield or 15% income on your investments, would that be good? I don't mean growing your investments. I just mean, what if, what if your investments paid you the equivalent of a, a dividend of 15% or the equivalent of a, an interest payment of 15% a year? Would that be good? 15% yeah, is great. I was reading through some of these comments. They're really good. Um, so Eno was saying, um, is it a good idea to take money from a 401k for a whole life policy? So one of the things that we're going to talk a lot about on the three-day on Friday is where your money is, where your wealth is, and when it makes sense to use some of it to leverage it, you know, because we get that a lot. Like I have money in a 401k. Should we take that and put it into a whole life policy? You know, where should I be taking money from to invest? You know, we're going to introduce you on Sunday to all kinds of opportunities. Um, we're doing something on this three day that we've never done before. And we're spending about half the day on Sunday, just loading it up with opportunities. So basically the way the three day is going to flow is, Okay, Friday, where's our money? How can we be smart with it? How can we access it? How can we keep more of the money that we've made or keep more of the money that we're earning? Saturday, we're start getting into some different strategies, investment techniques, uh, different things that we're doing. And then Sunday, we're going to roll it right into actually taking action and presenting different opportunities to use from what you learn on Friday and Saturday. So the flow of this three-day coming up is going to be really, really cool and um, just something to think about. So when it comes to like questions like, well, what do we do? Should we, you know, put how much into a 401 or, you know, retirement IRAs versus whole life? You know, how much should we just invest directly? What does that look like? We'll really lay all that out on Friday for you. And hopefully it makes a lot of sense. But to answer your question, um, you know, if, if you have money in an active 401k, you're giving up control of that money because your options in a 401k, unless it's like a self-directed solo K or something like that. But if it's like at your job, a 401k, you know, the match is great, you know, maybe put into the match, but you're giving up control of your money because if you pull it out before retirement age, typically you're penalized. Um, on top of the fact that you're limited to what you can invest in. So usually they offer you different types of index funds or lifestyle funds. And like Chris was saying, the older you get, maybe the less risky and more conservative funds that you go in. But at the end of the day, you're still in these various funds. You can't take money from a 401k and say, okay, like Chris has an opportunity for a real estate deal. I want to lend him money on that. You know, you can't do that with a 401k. So you're giving up control. So at some point you have to decide, you know, what am I putting in the 401? What's my overall strategy? How old am I? How much is in there? And those kinds of things. So, Ina, it might be easier to kind of answer that question for you specifically on a phone call, uh, which we're more than happy to hop on a money mentor call and, and do with you. So, um, you know, that might be the answer is hopping on a phone call, Ina, after the three day. So we can go ahead and take that. And everybody that attends the three day, we are going to um, have you schedule a call with our blueprint team to walk through what you learn during the three days, what your situation looks like, and we'll create that blueprint. We'll create that plan of action for you to take advantage of what you're doing, what you have now, and how you can start applying it to everything uh, that you've learned. So hopefully, you know, that, that answers that question a little bit. Breaking news, this just in. Are you sick of having your money lying around not doing anything? Well, we've got the solution for you, privatemoneyclub.com. Back to you, Chris. 
And in fact, let me go ahead and pull up the three day right now and show you a couple of things that we're doing um, for those of you on uh, that are here tonight with us. So what I'm sharing on the screen is uh, the landing page. So I'll put this in the chat box so everybody can go over and uh, register for this thing. And I'll show you what we're doing for those of you on tonight. Um, so this is the page right here. Just shows a little bit about what you're going to be learning Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, be very clear, this is recorded. So we record the entire three days and we give you the recordings immediately. So we'll get it to you either the night of or first thing in the morning the next day. As soon as it processes and uploads, uh, to the private YouTube links and all that good stuff. We're going to send it out in a mass email. We also send you a recap of the entire day. So on the recording, it's time stamped. So you can skip to each section. So you literally just click it and it takes you right there on the recording. So you can watch each section, um, you know, over and over or go back and review it again, or just, you know, watch the entire thing. And then the recap also has links. So let's say you loved what Craig Yenny was teaching when it comes to IBC and debt mapping. Well, you can click right there and schedule a call with Craig. Or let's say you loved what you learned from Greg Hurling about self-directed IRA investing. Well, there's a link right there. You click and it connects you directly with Horizon Trust and Greg's team. So we have it set up very nicely. And these recordings, this recap, these links, the timestamps, you keep that forever. Like those are yours. So you can go back to them months later. You can, you know, share them. What I recommend is share it with your immediate family. So let's say you have children, you're trying to teach financial education, adult children, even a business partner. We don't mind if you guys share that with your immediate family. Now, obviously don't go post it on your Facebook page and share it with, with people that way. But, you know, we encourage you to share it with your immediate family because at the end of the day, that's what this is all about is family and creating, you know, that, that generational wealth, that legacy uh, for you and the people that are important to you in life. So we encourage that. So it's really neat the way that we do these recordings and the way that we have this set up. So you're going to get that um, and just kind of see on here, you know, kind of some of the stuff we're going to be talking about. Um, I will say we end up making some last minute changes here and there. So we might throw in some bonus sessions. We usually go a little bit longer. So if we go till probably four o'clock, I wouldn't be surprised on any of this also. Like I was just talking to uh, Mike Puglisi earlier who runs um, our bus tours that we do with Private Money Club and does a lot of coaching. He does a lot of turnkey properties. I know a couple of people on here, I think have actually bought turnkey properties um, from Mike. So I was talking with Mike earlier and I'm like, dude, you got to come on the three day. So he might come in on Sunday for a little bit on this special segment with all the opportunities or at the end of one of the days. So this schedule right here, just so you know, like we'll probably have more than what you see on here. I uh, just to kind of give you a heads up on that, or maybe we'll bring him on the, uh, the panel, but something like that. Um, so you go through, I mean, we have, I don't know, hundreds of testimonials at this point. There's no way to get them all on here, but just want to learn a little bit more what other people have learned. Obviously the um, uh, John and Laurie are just amazing people. So you kind of go through, watch some of the past previews that we've done. Um, as a lot of, you know, if you've been around the campfire, you know, we provide so much education um, and, and training just on a weekly basis but the cool thing about this three days, bringing it all together, because we understand we do talk a lot about strategies and there's just so many places like, where do I start? Like, what's the first thing that I do? And like Tess said in the in the, in the the segment earlier, in the, in the chat box earlier, Tess was saying, I've been to, I don't know, how many of these have you been to, Tess, now? Like six, seven, eight of them? But what she did is each one of the three days she's attended, she simply implemented one new strategy. So she's picked one new opportunity, one new strategy and implements it every one that she comes to. I have other clients, other students that come and, you know, they're ready to do five different things all at once. So it's all up to you and whatever's right for you, but we'll teach you and then we'll hold your hand through the blueprint team, the blueprint process to really start implementing all of this um, that we're doing with you. So just understand it's the three days, it's the recordings, and it's us literally helping you implement what you learn as well every step along the way. So just some of the different speakers that we'll have there, you know, Christy and, and Noah are awesome. Kevin's great. I'll see Kevin this weekend in Vegas, see Greg this weekend, Brent this weekend in Vegas. So should be a good time on our mastermind out there. 
And then just some of the bonuses, like we invite you to come out to one of the two hour coachings that we do uh, with private money club. So you can learn on the two hour coaching. So again, we just try and give you so much value. So what we're doing with this um, training is it's, we've decided to keep it at 300 bucks. It's $297. Um, those of you that are on right now, if you put in the discount code final 23, so put in final 23, hit apply coupon, it's going to discount at hundred dollars. So $197 for all of that. And I think we might give you something else, Chris, are we doing anything else like a shirt? Not only is the hundred dollars what we're going to give, but like, you know, this shirt that I'm wearing here. So these are, these are the Will Ferrell limited edition ones. And I am willing to give anyone that buys their ticket tonight for a hundred dollars off. You basically can go in and pick whichever one of these Will Ferrell shirts you want, including the one I'm wearing, which is probably the most expensive of the bunch. So, cause this is like that wicking fabric, but uh, let me just show you kind of what else you can pick from. I'll, I'll just show you my favorite here and you guys should know this, but you know, if you ain't first, you're last. So you might as well grab yourself one of those. So we'll give you a choice of any of these that you want. You can take winners, get to do what they want. You can do, if you ain't first, you're last. The one that I've got on. So any one of these that you want, this is the one I'm wearing here, living the dream. It just doesn't say the money school. It says so hot right now. I'll throw in one of these or hold on. Let me uh, give you an option because someone's like, I don't know if I want one of those. We do have some holidays coming up and I do have some of these limited edition skate decks. This one's number 90 of 100. These are one-offs, custom dipped. So there's not one that's the same. So I can't promise you which one we would send you, but these sell for 60 bucks plus shipping. So you're like 80 bucks to your door. I'll give you one of these shipped to your door with your ticket. So any of the, you can get one of the limited edition BYOB decks. You can hang in your basement, hang wherever, give it to your kids. Or you can get one of the limited edition Will Ferrell shirts like the one I'm wearing plus the hundred bucks off. That's tonight only. Cool. We're going to do that for only people live on here right now. So we like to reward people that take action, take time out of their schedules. If you had something else going on tonight, sorry um, that you missed it, but uh, it's part of the game, man. You can still come to the three day, but the t-shirts and skateboards are for those of you on tonight. So congrats for being on here. Yeah. And the, uh, the dates for that again, Stephen, because we had somebody ask, Thomas asked in the, <clears throat> the Q and A. Yeah, it's um, next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So that's going to be November 2nd, 3rd, right. 4th, 3rd, 3rd. Yeah, because this weekend we're going to be in Las Vegas. I'm sorry, 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Yep, 3rd, 4th, and 5th. So it's the week after, Thomas. All right. Well, good news is, Chris, I got that pitch out of the way. <laughs> basically, well, good. I'm, I'm basically glad you got that out. Yeah. Hey, I told them all it was coming, right? So, hey, listen, yeah. don't ever say, oh, we went to this webinar to learn all this stuff, and all they did is try to sell me a ticket to a three-day. I warned you. That was our <laughs> ask. But – you know, pretty much gave you a really hell of a good offer. Um, in, in the three day, we're going to literally dive deep into this stuff. And I'm so sorry I had tech issues um, because I got through number one, which is preserve and protect. Number two, which was income, but, but I think that's where it cut off. So I guess let me just pick up there. You know, when we're talking about 15% return, all of you were saying that that was a good return. So one of the things I can tell you that is really, really easy to get, I don't care, you know, if you're like that client the other night who had about a million bucks, so at a million bucks, that's $150,000 a year in income. I don't know what any of you have for income, but if you've got a hundred or if you got a million bucks, 15% works out to be $150,000. Okay. That, that's what, that's what you basically, that's what you can make. And, uh, and I'm not candy coating it. I, I do this for people all the time. They're like, there's no way, there's no way I could make that much. The problem with most people is they don't understand what money working for them is. They've only put their money in markets in 401ks, 403bs, they put their money away and they've invested it and grown it and they watch their number go up and up and up and then down and down and down and then up and up and up and down and down and down. But then they've never really talked about like, how do I maximize income on my portfolio? So again, you know, you can do the math any which way you want, 100,000, you can do that 15%. But here, here's the, the most important thing that you all need to realize. To get a 15% return, most people would think you got to make a lot or you got to take on a lot of risk. Hold on. I just want to give you some numbers here. 150, because a lot of people like 150 a year, eh. But you know what that is? That's $12,500 a month. What we can help anyone do, we can work with your advisor, your family office. You know, We can work with anyone on your team, you, your, your, your spouse. 
we can work with them to show them how part of your portfolio could be carved out to provide an income. You just say, all right, I need, you know, we need $70,000 and we want to take on very little risk with this $70,000. We want to make sure that this 70,000 comes because, you know, and then let's say you got a, a million bucks. What we could then do is create a portfolio and we could basically say, okay, set, we need whatever has to generate, you know, at 12 to 15%, whatever it takes to generate 70 grand, we're going to put here. Then if you're going to follow like Ray Dalio on that, you could put 50% or maybe even more into T uh, treasury bonds. Why? Because that's guaranteed by the federal government. If you love your stocks, well, if you want to trade stocks, figure out a percentage you put into that. And my, my numbers are way off here, folks, but you get the point. So, and then you can just diversify your portfolio, but we basically could help you do this. We can't make any recommendations in terms of what stocks or what deals, but I tell you right now, every single week, we're showing people how to get 15%. The craziest thing about this is this 15% you're going to get is secured. Secured and collateralized. Yep. That's right. Your stocks aren't secured or collateralized. I can promise you that. If the company goes bankrupt, if you invested in WeWork, well, I don't know. Sorry. That was not, not a good one. But that can happen to any stock. Yeah, that can happen to even the big guys because you've seen it in the past. You've seen huge conglomerates like Lehman Brothers go to zero. And you've seen stockholders and bondholders lose just about everything. Here, you can do this and you can be fully secured in an asset. Now, you know, a lot of you are like, well, what is that asset? Well, that asset could, it can be any asset. It could be real estate. You could lend on real estate. You could be the bank and lend on real estate. I mean, some of you love these tractor trailers, okay? You could do tractor trailers. You could do forklifts. I mean, I, I am right now doing another forklift. Why? I, it's cool. You buy the forklift, you own it. It never leaves the shop. It goes through the whole shop and it comes out the other end fully refurbished. It's like, it's like sitting down and watching HGTV, you know, where they got this crappy house and 23 minutes later, the house is beautiful. And you're like, holy shit, they just made 40,000 bucks in 23 minutes. Man, you just buy the forklift. The forklift goes around the shop, goes through the paint shop, goes to the detail. And then at the end, you got yourself a fully renovated forklift. And then you got the company, United Lift, which then sells the forklift for you and splits the profit 60% to them, 40 to, to you. Like, I, I, of course you're buying forklifts. Steven's got a bunch of forklifts. So what is the collateral? Whatever suits your needs. Could be real estate. Could be, you know, the forklifts. Could be semis. I, I'm not doing any semis. Why? Because they can be anywhere in the country. I just don't want to be driving around the country chasing a forklift if for some reason something goes bad. So that's the only reason I don't do them. But I think it's a great idea. Forklifts, they don't move very fast. So even if my forklift's mobile, like I just got to, I got to chase that sucker down. House, I don't know. Has anyone ever seen your house get up and walk away? I haven't. So I always know where it is. So basically that's how you do it collateralized and secured. And that's how you turn an income on. And I just, that same advisor, Edward Jones, son of a pup, you know what he said to the client? Cause she told him I'd been, I'd been lending money. It's going really well. You know, we've had a lot of success. He says, I'd be careful. That's risky. <laughs> I'd be careful. That's risky. Okay. Define risk is what I would say to the advisor. Please define risk. Is, is risk mitigated by you putting them in a mutual fund just because it says large cap or says international or whatever it says? Is that mitigating risk? Or is your diversified portfolio of mutual funds? Or is it just that your diversified portfolio of mutual funds pays you a management fee and then you charge a fee on top of that to manage the money? Yeah, oh yeah, you're getting charged twice, folks. So if any of you have advisors and they're putting you in a mutual fund and then that advisor charges a 1% wrap fee or a 1% management fee, do you realize that's not all you're paying? You're paying the 1% to the advisor or to the RIA or, or brokerage. And then you're also paying fees on the funds. But you got to read the prospectus to find those. Even ETFs, even though they're low, you still pay fees. So all I'm trying to say is you can do this. For getting into this deal, there are no fees. Okay, It's just you and the borrower. That's it. And we got a whole bunch of them that we'll be talking about. We'll actually have a whole day. This has never been done before. We've got a whole day. Well, we've got a whole bunch of people that have opportunities, secured and collateralizable, okay? Opportunities that will be coming on to the three-day to talk about their newest opportunities that they have for all of you. So income, we got you. It's kind of like that Arby's commercial, we got the meat. You know, we've been, we should just redo that commercial and say, we got the money. And we got the people that have the ability to turn your money on. So that's number two, income. Now I know we're running late. 
but I told you I was not going to stop until I gave you guys the value. Fair enough. Okay. Cause that was the, that was my promise to you. And it's, this is, this is amazing. And I, and I want to, I want to give all of you a lot of credit. Okay. We're one minute out from the hour and there's 162 people on here. We haven't lost a single person. Matter of fact, all we've done is grow the audience. I, I just got to say, thank you. I, I don't even know what else to say. I got to say, thank you. And I got to say kudos to you because your time is the most valuable asset. So I, I like to think, even though we had some tech issues, that something that we're saying is striking a nerve. Something that we're saying is making sense to you. Maybe you want to take less risk. Maybe you are concerned about what's going to happen. Is it going to be World War III? Are we going to be in a recession? What's going to happen? I don't know, but why not get ready for it? Okay. Steven, when he lives in Florida, like they know how often, like when a hurricane's coming, how soon do you know that the hurricane's coming, Steven? Usually like a week in advance. Okay, so a week in advance, big hurricane coming, it's supposed to be a category five. What are you going to do? I'm going to prepare, man. How? A lot of work, a lot of work. You start loading up on food and water and getting the hurricane shutters out and getting those, get ready to put them up and gassing up the vehicles and, you know, all the all yeah. the nightmarish stuff that we have to do sometimes. So, I mean, some of you are like, I don't live in Florida, but others live in the middle, you know, mid, you know, I don't know, places where there are tornadoes or anything else. So all I'm trying to say is like, when you know there's a natural disaster coming or a hurricane, a tornado, an earthquake, a whatever, you prepare. Why don't we do that with our money? So that's preservation of principle and that's income. And the last thing, and, and this is the single most impressive thing that I think we do. And, and I might be a bit biased here. I'm kind of wearing everything on me. And this is the power of being the bank. I'm not going to go into the infinite banking concept tonight. 700 and some videos on my YouTube that teach it. And we're going to be teaching it at the three day in a different way. We're going to be showing you some real case studies on how this works. But, but here's the thing. When you look at banks, they're pretty good with money, right? Well, I can tell you they are. They're really good with money. They tricked all of you into taking out a 30 year mortgage and they tricked you because you bought it. You took a mortgage out at what? Two, three. Any of you got a mortgage two and a half percent? Who's got mortgages for two and a half percent? Feels good, right? Like you're looking at now it's 8%. You got a 2.5% mortgage. Yep. See, there we go. We got some two and a half, some three, two fives there. Yep. Yep. All right. So that feels good, doesn't it? But when you actually look at the amortization schedule over the first seven years, what you find is that you give up about 80% of every single payment to the bank in interest, about 80%, which means 20% is going to principal. So are you really paying? Three, two, five, two and a half, two point nine percent. Are you really paying that? No. Christy from Fantastic dissects this. It was it was eye opening to me. You're paying way more than three percent. It's just the stated interest rate that you're being tricked by. So when 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 I talk about becoming the own bank, why? Well, because banks are just brilliant. Banks have fooled all of us into going out and buying, taking out thirty year mortgages, and we rushed to refinance those mortgages. We went from five percent down to three, and our payment dropped a little bit. But what you did is screwed yourself. You screwed yourself. Yes, your payment went down, but you reset the amortization clock. You reset the velocity of interest. The banks laughing all the way to the well, all the way to the bank. Oh, pun, no pun intended on that one, but. Every time you refinance, every time you buy a new house for, for a better interest rate, you are resetting the clock. All your interest is now going back to the bank. They love you for that because they, they've done the math. They know the return. And if you've watched Christy Fantastics, you'll know you're not paying 3.25. You're not paying 2.9. And any of you that have a mortgage between 2 and 4%, I know when you refinance. I know when you bought your house. You bought it somewhere in that low interest rate cycle over the last, let's just say 10 years. So I know that some of you, if you held it for 10 years, you're starting to get into the point where interest is starting to give way to principal and you're paying a little bit more to principal, but it took you seven to 10 years to get there. So why do you wanna be the bank? Well, because banks are really smart. The number one thing we teach is this, we teach the infinite banking concept. We teach you how to turn your, your liabilities into assets. Robert Kiyosaki said it in Rich, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And the easiest thing in the world is exactly what I just said. Turn your debts and expenses into assets. Because over here, all of you probably more than likely have some form of debt. And over here, a lot of you have some type of savings. Because I know, you know, we, we have an audience, and I mean, all of you know this because you're here, that are pretty affluent. Most of you have a lot of money in savings. So what a lot of people have, though, they have money. They have lots of money over here, but they also have lots of debt over here. 
And all we do through a process called the infinite banking concepts is we show you how to shift money from this side to this side, and then from this side back to this side. So if the bank is making 80% of all the interest in the first seven years, what we do is we try to get you to make 80% of the interest in the first seven years. We try to get you to not change how much you save, not change how much you work, not work more, not eat rice and beans, although that is my favorite food. You know, we're trying not to change your lifestyle. Don't stop buying Starbucks. Let's just find a way to pay for more. Okay. Don't yell at your, your significant other, your spouse or husband and wife when you get the credit card bill and you're like, honey, why did you buy more Mackenzie Childs? Oh, sorry, that's my wife. Say, well, all right, she likes Mackenzie Childs. Let's just find a way to make this work. How much more money needs to be out there working for me to afford her Mackenzie Childs habit? You know, like that's how we think now. But we think that way because we control the narrative. We control the flow of money. So on Friday, next Friday, at the three-day money school essentials, I've got something really special, something that we haven't done yet. I mean, we've done bits and pieces of it, but <clears throat> I'm going to show you a couple things using the infinite banking concept that will literally allow you to make a whole lot of money, but you have to work no harder and take on zero risk, zero risk. Make a bunch more money without taking on any risk. That's exactly what I'm going to cover for you the first day of the three-day. And Stephen, I don't know if you covered this about the three day. A lot of people, they've got weddings, graduate, well, no, no graduations, but they got, they got stuff to do, you know, for three days and they can't, they can't be there. Did you tell them that it's recorded and edited and timestamped so that they literally don't have to watch all of it. They can just go to the section that they want to learn about and watch bits and pieces. Yeah. It's, um, it's recorded the entire thing. Uh, like Chris said, we timestamp it. Uh, you know, I was mentioning it earlier. We put the links in there for every single section. Um, it's done very, very nicely. So even if you can't make the three days at all, I would definitely take advantage of the t-shirt or the skateboard deck, the discount, and just you'll have the recordings forever. And it's um, it's a great way to do it. I mean, everybody tells us that they love the way we do the recordings and they're so thankful, even if they're there live, because there's so much and we don't stop. We don't take lunch breaks. We just go from 10 a.m. Eastern till 4 p.m. Eastern all, all three days. So definitely take advantage. And just to be clear, I know we were talking a little bit about Vegas seeing people in Vegas this weekend. That's a different event. Um, we do, we host an event called the Experience Mastermind, which is a higher level uh, for, how would you describe it, Chris? For our clients that want to really build personal relationships and experience life. And um, so that's what we have going on in Vegas. Vegas this weekend. It is a five to $10,000 ticket price. So it's a little bit higher. Um, and we do, it does sell out. Like I think the one in Springs already real close to selling out. So if you're interested in doing something like that with us, um, just email me and I'll stick you on our wait list and I'll let you know as soon as we have the next one ready. But um, that's what Vegas is this weekend. Just so everybody's aware. This three-day training is virtual and it's next weekend, November 3rd, 4th, and 5th. And it's, it's like I said before, it's what brings together everything we do with BYOB, controlling your wealth and solving your money problem. And it's what'll get you ready for something like the Experience Mastermind and taking your life, your business, your finances to the next level. Absolutely. So folks, I know I kind of cut that last one a little short with being your own bank, but I think a lot of you kind of know about the infinite banking concept. Can you do it if you're active military? Yes, you just can't be deployed. We just had a few questions. I want to just give you them real quick. I know we're at past time. You know, Randy was just asking, like, I love the idea of BYOB. And it kind of goes into the next question. I'm going to put these together. My biggest fear is the money crashing or the dollar crashing. I'm concerned having cash on hand, even in my own bank. What happens if the dollar crashes? And then Jimmy was saying, is the belief that we should deploy 100% of capital? Or do you set a bar at, at a minimum that must stay liquid? Even if it is in your own bank, do you think it is smart or overly cautious to always keep a year's living expenses at the ready, assumingly cash? Yeah. Like, what do you think? Great, great questions. Uh, so Randy, let me just hit yours first. So your biggest fear is the dollar crashing. It's a lot of people's fear. So you, there's nothing, remember the serenity prayer, there's nothing you can do. You live in the United States of America. The only, the, the only thing we can use for exchange is the dollar. I mean, yes, you know, like Stephen and I, we, we have coins and gold and silver, you know, for, for emergency day stuff. And also to hopefully, you know, grow the wealth there as a defensive nature. But the thing you have to understand is the dollar is used by 60% of all world trade is 
exchanged in the dollar. I know the BRICS. I know what they're doing. I know oil is being exchanged in the yuan and, and other uh, currencies. I, I know what's going on. They're trying to they're trying to take down the dollar. This isn't the first time they've done that. This is just the first time for some reason you're hearing about it because of wars and all this stuff going on. It's an election year, folks. The party's just getting started. You think shit's getting crazy now? Like the election is still not till next November. It's a, almost a year away. Like the party's just getting started, man. Don't even pop the popcorn yet. So the dollar going to zero, that's very highly unlikely, if, if probably not even possible. Because the Fed's number one job is to protect a dollar. And the Fed will do anything, including taking us to war, to protect a dollar. So the BRICS are definitely you know, trying to take the dollar down. But there's no other denomination or no other currency it, it, right now in existence that has even re the remote chance of taking the dollar down. So with your IVC, okay, if your concern is the dollar and you're concerned about having your cash on hand, here's the number one thing you need to do. You need to diversify banks. This is something I'm going to cover in the three day, and I've talked about it before, definitely during the pandemic. You need to diversify your bank accounts. So you can't just have all your money in one bank. Matter of fact, you should, depending on how much money you have, you should split it up amongst a whole bunch of different banks, a couple commercial banks. And I know it's a pain in the ass. You got to get checks for a whole bunch of banks, but just keep money in one bank that you use to pay your bills. <laughs> Any extra money, and I'm going to pet, you know, pass this on to James's. Any extra money you want liquid? Because I think, listen, I think keeping money in a money market or in a bank or in T-bills right now is, is a really smart thing to do because you want liquidity. Uh, I don't know about a year's worth of expenses. I always say three to six months, but I only say that because the majority of my wealth is in, in policies, which is also liquid and guaranteed. So, you know, if it's just in cash, yeah, you might want to keep longer than three to six months, but that's normally what you'd want to keep in an emergency fund. But don't keep it all at one bank if you're worried about banks and runs on banks and banks going down and your money getting locked up. I mean, those people that had money in Silicon Valley or Republic or Signature, like standing out outside that bank, wondering if their money's gone, that's just not something I want for any of you. So diversify your banks. Have a whole bunch of banks. There's tons of online banks. Send you know, 20 grand to one online bank, 50 to another, you know, diversify among a whole bunch of different banks, community banks, credit unions, and commercial banks. And that'll, that'll kind of solve both of your problems, James and Randy. Uh, Randy, in terms of the dollar crashing going to zero, I mean, we're all screwed. So, you know, if that happens, man, I don't know. You can come over to my house. I got some, I got some bourbon and uh, a couple beers in the fridge. I mean, I don't know what we're going to be exchanging. And I got some silver coins, so we'll be good for a little bit. Uh, can you share the reference you were talking about earlier with the recession chances, what that was? So the reference was uh, 2024. And, I, and folks, I, I did a YouTube video. So I did a YouTube video on the dollar crashing. Okay, I did a YouTube video on how insurance companies are safer than uh, banks. And I also did an insurance, or I did a, a video for YouTube on, on this right here. But uh, 2024 projections... This is a survey. The Fed says there's a 0% chance. The inverted yield curve, or just the yield curve, predicts 61% chance of a recession. When they polled economists, there's a 48% chance. Consumers, like us, 69% chance. Goldman Sachs said 15% chance. Bank of America said 40% chance. And CEOs said there's an 84% chance of a recession. Um, I can I can look at where that was sourced. Uh, we have somebody that does all of the scripts and all the, the back end stuff. I kind of point them in a direction and they go out and they research it all and find factual data. If you ever watch my YouTube videos, you'll see that there's B-roll that comes up behind everything I'm saying, which is all the, the articles and the facts. So we're, we're pulling data from lots of places. But if you need it, I can find it. Just uh, shoot me an email. All right, Stephen, you're typing. So I'm going to hit Boyd's here. Is there a video or resource to be able to learn more about how to determine the velocity of interest to be able to determine if paying down low, low interest rate debt versus investing other ways. Yeah, Boyd, we, we have all those calculators. I was going to say, I'd probably just schedule a call, but yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, just Boyd, I would suggest just scheduling a call. But we have all those calculators. Uh, we're creating them all for a division called Done For You. So it'll be the family office Done For You. Uh, that's going to be the, the name of it, I think. So yes, we could show you everything. We could show you the impact of paying debts down. We can show you the velocity of interest, all of that. So, sorry, I could go on forever about that topic because it is something that is very, very misutilized out there. Oh, Maggie said, how much does a policy cost to start? You got to look at it differently, Maggie. It's not a cost. How much do you want to deposit would be what I'd ask you. So you say, how much does it cost? I would say, how much do you want to deposit? 
so the minimum is 10 times your age. So I'm 46 years old. So Molly, my, or Maggie, my minimum would be $460 a month. So just add a zero to your, to your age. And that would be the minimum, but that's just the minimum. So when you, when you're looking at the infinite banking concepts and the policies that go along with the process, you have to focus on, this is not, a, this isn't, you're not paying, like you're not paying for something. You're actually saving. You're, you got to look at it as a deposit, a premium deposit. So it's very important. You got to change the mindset. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, it definitely works in Canada. We can give you the link for some of our, our trusted uh, referral partners up in Canada. Yeah. Just so shoot us an email on Canada. Uh, Jimmy said, but you all are always deploying or moving your cash value. Do you sit on any? Yeah. So James, I do uh, like, you know, I, I always have some sitting in there, but a lot of what I have sitting James is, is not so much that I want money sitting in my policies. It's because I've got so much money recapturing coming back into the policies. I mean, every single month, as of last week, I have just under $10,000 a month recoming, coming back in, not new deposits, folks. This is just money that I used to give away, give away on car payments, give away on mortgages, give away on everything. I just recycle it all. So there's almost 10,000 a month coming in. So that money builds up. So James, I don't keep a lot liquid just because I've got so much coming back. But I, I definitely, you know, I have money stashed everywhere. I have credit unions. I have community banks. I have a commercial bank. Uh, I have a TD Ameritrade account. I have a Charles Schwab account, all treasury bonds and money markets. And then I have 10, you know, policies. And then I also have money in my business trust. I, I, I have, I, I, I just have money stashed everywhere, you know, but, but the hardest part for me is just tracking it all. So that's why I created Done For You. Um, but yes, I always have money ready to deploy at any given time. Matter of fact, right now, I probably, I probably have too much ready to, depl to deploy primarily because I'm concerned about all the stuff that's going on. And I know there's an opportunity and I don't want to deploy too much and miss an opportunity that I could have got in on. How do you oh. go about preparing for the day when digital currencies arrive? Chris, dude, thank you for asking this. This is a freaking great question. I'm already prepared. You know why? Cause I'm working with a company. Okay, that right now is at the forefront of literally bringing IBC to blockchain. That's it. So the digital currency already there, man. We just can't talk about it yet. So this has been going on for several years and it would I'd really be hard for me to explain it in the last couple of minutes. If you come to the three day and you bring that up, I will basically print X matter of fact tomorrow. Stephen, can you remind me? I got to print out the. Uh, the blockchain, uh, there's a name for it, but there's a white paper and I'll read it, but I'll tell you what's coming uh, in the future. Okay. Probably not too far off future. We're going to have a way to do the infinite banking concept using blockchain, essentially digital currency, but it, it's not here yet. There's a lot of things that have to happen to get it to the point where there's enough liquidity in the system to handle what we're about to do. Essentially, the whole name of the game of what we're all trying to do is we're trying to build a mechanism that essentially gives institutions an option so that they don't have to buy treasury bonds and they can basically invest in a pool of life insurance contracts on the blockchain that are all guaranteed by insurance companies and getting a better return than treasuries without any interest rate risk. Great question. And we don't charge any fees. Uh -huh. We set up policies, we strategize, we help you hold your hand through the approval process. We uh, help you implement and teach you exactly how to use the policy. Um, and there's no fee for any of that. It's just part of being a, a client with us for infinite banking. Um, the only, only fee you would pay is $197 for three full days of education on how to start implementing um, a lot of these strategies and, and what, you know, how to use that policy to maximize its effectiveness and, you know, that's a big thing. I mean, these policies, Chris, being your bank's great. The money's protected in there. It's safe. It's going to compound uninterrupted for the rest of your life, guaranteed. Um, it creates a generational legacy aspect with the tax-free death benefit and everything else. But, you know, to really maximize these things, you get that money in there, like you're saying, and, and, and immediately move it out and get it into some of these other ways where you're recapturing interest or you're growing wealth through these investments. And really, that's what this three days really going to bring it together for you. So it's a lot of fun. So it looks like I struck a nerve with uh, the blockchain stuff. So I'm putting it in my calendar to print the blockchain white paper. Uh, I cannot share it. I just want to be clear. Uh, I cannot share this white paper, but I will certainly read it to all of you and it will make perfect sense. And you will understand exactly what's being done and what's been being done now for probably the better part of over a year. And I was asked to kind of come in and, and help with it, which uh, 
more than happy to do it. They got some of the best IBC economists on their team and some rock stars. So one other thing I want to hit <clears throat> before we wrap is Sal said, and, and Sal, you would, you put it in the chat, which is why we missed it earlier, but $100,000 dump in, 43 years old, what would be the monthly premium range? I just, I just literally did one just like this uh, on, on a 45-year-old, not 43. So yours will be slightly better. But to do 100000 I did it with about a $12,500 premium going in. And it, I mean, Stephen, you know, that it, it's freaking retarded. It truly, like, when you see the numbers, because you're, you're, in, you're just in a sweet spot, so you're, you're 43, you know, at 45 with 112.5 going in, uh, it's, it's freaking rocket, literally a rocket. Um, so if that's something you're really considering, you need to book a call. You really need to book a call. Uh, <clears throat> so that all, all right. I'd love to keep going all night, Chris, but we got to, I know I got to wrap up so my voice. We got a couple, right. um, we got a few events tomorrow. If anybody wants to join us at nine 30 AM Eastern, um, actually, let me do this. Let me put the YouTube channel. So all of you that are on right now, if you have not done this, go over to our YouTube channel and, um, there's a little bell at the top, like in the video we were playing earlier, ring that bell and hit the little notify button. And whenever we go live, which is two times every Wednesday, as well as a lot of other random stuff, it'll notify you when we go live. So tomorrow morning at 9 30 AM Eastern, we have what the F happened, which is where we just talk some trash and about the markets and policy and what's going on in the news and everything that's ultimately driving the Fed's decisions, the markets and your money. So join us for that at 9.30 a.m. Eastern. It's a lot of fun. You can watch that live stream directly on that YouTube channel. So go over to that YouTube channel and register. We also have an Ask Me Anything where we just simply, you just put questions in and our whole team answers those questions every Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. So if we didn't get to your question tonight, definitely hop on there. Um, obviously during the whole three day, we'll be answering your questions. Uh, Chris and I will be on the entire time. We'll have some of our money mentors on there supporting and helping. And then, like I said, we'll get a call scheduled with every single one of you uh, to go through your blueprint, your personal blueprint strategy to start implementing this stuff. And then tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern, uh, we do have the Wealth Webinar Wednesday where we're going to go in deep tomorrow on infinite banking and some different investing strategies. So go ahead and check that out. And I just wanted to congratulate. We had 28, 28 people enroll for the three-day training just right now during this last 30 minutes. So congratulations so to the 28 of you. I can't wait to see you guys rocking these T-shirts, the skateboard decks. Find Chris, find me on Facebook, friend us. Post those pictures. We'd love to see it. We'll share it. We'll get it out there to the community for you. We'll invite you to our private Facebook groups, which by the way, definitely get on that as well. Those of you coming to the three day, we'll hook you up on the private Facebook group, but share those photos, tag BYOB. That's what it's all about is sharing the knowledge, live it, learn it, apply it, share it, have some fun. Can't wait to see you guys. Oh, Jennifer, 29. Congratulations, Jennifer A., I uh, just saw it come in right now. So look forward to seeing you guys. If you need anything, give me a shout um, and we're here for you. Anything else, Chris? Nope. Randy said we got to wrap it up. So it's time to wrap it up. All right, folks. Thank you all for staying with us. I know we went over, but we said we were going to. We will see you tomorrow three more times. And then we'll see a whole bunch of you in Las Vegas and the rest of you at the three day. Thank you and have a good evening. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. We're putting up tons of them, but I think if you like this one, you'll probably like that video as well. Not only that, I've got a book that I created, Mapping Out the Millionaire Mystery, where we actually show you what the wealthy do in the game they play with money. I want you to have that for free. And if you wanna know about all my new videos coming up, click that alert button, actually smash that alert button, and you'll be notified every time we put a new video. So we'll see you on the next episode.